We're going international again today, my friends, on the For Your Success podcast. Our guest today is in France, and I'm in Mexico. So we are, are very international, and we're going to be talking with him about his course launches. He is helping entrepreneurs to uh, host courses on their own platforms. And so this is a, a, a different take on some of the things we've talked about before. We're really excited to welcome to our show, George Wansack. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Katie. It's my pleasure. Tell us a little bit about your course. I know you said you're in France now. You've spent some time in the United States. You've been building up this business to help entrepreneurs with their courses. Tell us a little bit about what's gotten you to where you are today. Great. Yeah, what's gotten me uh, where I am today is that I've, I've been very passionate about WordPress. And I've been very passionate about owning my own platform. And what I've realized that as helping entrepreneurs build their own platforms or build their own courses, that um, you know, third-party platforms are great, they're easy to get started, but they were always asking for something that they could not do. And so with WordPress, you have that flexibility. Now it comes with more to all the challenges. And so I just bridged the gap and tried to make it as easy and as simple as possible for them to basically be in control, have their own platform so they can host unlimited courses on their own platform. I love that. It simplifies the tech, right? We're always saying simple is superior, so. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, if you can make it simple and you can simplify the tech process, well, then everybody wins. I mean, at least they do. <laughs> and so you're, you're taking people who have a blog or a WordPress website and are creating courses and you're showing them how to actually host it there so they don't need a Kajabi or a Teachable or any of those other softwares, they can actually host the courses on WordPress. That's correct. Actually, I brought a little twist to it. I found out that when you already have your own WordPress blog, as you mentioned, sometimes it could be challenging to building it from the ground up. So what I've done is I've actually built a template, a course platform that's already. And what I do is just say, hey, there it is. Let's put it on your domain and let's modify it, brand it, make it your own so that you don't, just don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time. And it makes it super simple. It's very short step by steps and they just love it because they can just start from scratch and just make it their own. Love it. Love it. And, you know, I have to ask, does it involve HTML or is it simpler than that? <laughs> it, it involves no HTML whatsoever, no CSS whatsoever. It is actually very short videos, right? What I, I mean, what I've also realized is that uh, when you watch long tutorials, it can be very challenging. And then you get to the end of a tutorial and you just don't know where to start. So... I have created a program that helped them step by step to modify this entire platform that's already pre-built and brand it with their own branding uh, with videos. I don't think there's not a video that's longer than 10 minutes. So it's very small, short bites, no coding whatsoever. No. Love it. Love it. Yeah. That's what we teach in, in our master teacher accelerator program is that you've got to have it bite size Correct. for people to be able to consume it and put it into practice. And I love that. Love that you're doing that for, for the course creators mm -hmm. themselves as well. Yeah, tell us about your, uh, tell us about your most recent launch experience. How, how did that go? So I did a better launch in July uh, that was recent and that went really well. Um, I've been super happy with the result. Basically, I uh, took some course creators who had zero tech experience and were afraid actually of technology. A lot of them had actually said that they would never build a website ever again. And now they've built their confidence. So the launch went really well. There was a really nice group of uh, mostly women <laughs> for some reason, but uh, it went really well, brought great results. And so I'm very happy to now just being able to expand. Love it. Love it. And so when you are ramping up to a launch, George, what is, what is that? What are some things that you do? Are you building your list in a certain way? Are you going live? Like there's so many different strategies to use when you're, when you're launching a course or program, what's your preferred way of, of ramping up to a launch? 
you're right, there's a lot of ways that you can prep for a launch. And what I have done so far in the last couple of years, I haven't done many launches, but all of them have been affiliate launches. Mm. And that is what have has brought some result for me. Uh, what also has brought result, and I think that sometimes we tend to forget, is your best affiliate is the very well customers to whom you've brought results. And so what I pretty proud of, I have to say, is to deliver result. And I would go the extra, I mean, I heard last week uh, somebody was saying that I, I don't go the extra mile, I go the extra five mile. But I really make sure that actually the people, the cross creators, the entrepreneurs that trust, put their trust in my hand, that I deliver. And then they become affiliates. And that is what I've done. It's just affiliate launches, and I've had great success with that. And you don't you realize that even with a small list and within without um, you know ads, without a lot of social presence, I don't really have a lot of online social presence. You can get great results if you have people that really trust in what you do. Yes, this is true, and and it is you know another another key part of the programs that we provide too is is helping to support our course creators to get their people through to the transformation so that mm -hmm. their people get the results that they need to give good testimonials to our people which is good results for us which means exactly. we're all selling more things because of the natural advertising that happens organically from just doing what you said you'd do and being able to help those people achieve the thing that they signed up to achieve mm -hmm. and it's so so important What's what's one of your keys for working with affiliates in a launch? Now, just for people who are listening or watching this, I want to ex explain what an affiliate is in case that's a new term. Um, an affiliate is someone who says, I will promote you and um, any sale that I generate for you, then I get a commission from. So we're not increasing the price in order for those people to promote it. We're taking a piece of what we would have made as profit and paying them a commission for that sale that came in. And so generally there's a, a special unique link that you can share that will track those people's engagements and sales back to the person whose link it was so that you can track all of that, keep track of it financially and things in the background. But I'm wondering, since affiliates have been such a good experience for you in launching your program, what are some of your um, tips or things that you've done that have made it a really good experience for the, the people that you're working with to promote? So that's a very good question. I think that, again, being in the tech world, what we sometimes tend to forget is that other people, they're not necessarily tech savvy. And so what I try to do is always keep things as simple as possible. That is really the, the, the bottom line is trying to keep it as simple as possible. And what I've done is I've actually created a, um, uh, that is part of the platform that actually, you know, uh, the course creators who enroll my program benefit from is I've created a system with this platform in which they get one link and that's their link forever. They do not mm. have to go and figure out what links they need to do because sometimes that's a challenge. And so I create a page that is assigned to them in a way that I can control all the affiliate pages at once. So if I'm launching, if I'm going to wait list and closing with just a couple of clicks, I can control that content in all the affiliate pages. So for them, from their perspective, they have one link. And actually the advantage of that is that links can continue, right? I mean, if it's, if they post these links on social media and the launch is closed, well, somebody will, will find that link later that link will still be valid because it will most likely send to a waitlist page. And what I do is I keep the uh, cookies, I mean, may I explain that or not, but for about 180 days. So I incentivize the affiliates. Another thing that I do to, uh, re again, keep it simple is, um, if you're really going to use your affiliate, your raving fund to promote you, you want to reward them. And I offer a lifetime commission and lifetime commission on subscription on whatever. So, you know, they get ongoing revenues and it's great. Love it. Love it. And yeah, the, the cookie term, again, if you're not familiar mm -hmm. with affiliates and tracking, that's just something, that's what we call the, the specific link to you um, that would track that sale or that engagement back to the one who referred them. Um, and so w when he says it's a 180 day cookie, we're talking about, you know, this is like a six month, essentially, if anyone, anyone clicks through my link to George's site, 
then if you buy any time in the next six months, then that sale would be attributed to me and I could still earn the commission. And when he says lifetime, um, lifetime commissions, that means for as long as that person stays a client of his, for as long as that person continue, if it's a membership, like the monthly recurring revenue and all of that, I, I continue to receive commissions for the lifetime of that that person remains a client um, for him. And that's, that's a really cool thing because in today's world where you can set your own rules for affiliate commissions and things, a lot of times uh, we don't see people being that generous with their commissions. And I think, it, like you said, it's really great to be able to reward those who are helping to promote the things that we do. And um, that the idea of a longer commission time frame or the lifetime uh, commissions is a, a really good thing. Yeah, definitely. I found that to be very true. And um, and again, it, it all ties in into it's a relationship, right? We talk these days about relationship marketing. Why are you just building a relationship? And you're building a relationship with your client by delivering value. You're bringing a relationship with your affiliate and you want that relationship to last. So what you do is just reward. And, and sometimes I hear people say, why are you giving out a lot? Says, I'm happy. I would love to give more because you give more. That, be, that means you get more. It's everybody wins. So I'm just really happy to do that. I love it. Talk about one of the challenges that you found in, in launching and, and how are you working to overcome that for the next time? So one of the challenges that I've faced is uh, being a one man shop. Is that how we say it? <laughs> and so uh, I'm really feeling the time now that it's time to start building a team because what you find out is that, um, especially I'm the we all have something to teach, you know, when we launch, but I've got tech to teach. And my, you want to stay focused on your zone of genius, on whatever it is that you do best. And what I do best is teach and teach tech. And everything else, I enjoy it, but it takes time. And so one of the challenges of launching when you launch on your own is having to do everything on your own, right? And even if you can repurpose some of the content from one launch to another, you always find yourself that you want to innovate and you have to recreate. And so um, time has come for me to start expanding and just getting some help. But that is one of the challenges that I have found, being on your own. And what will you get help with first? Uh, first, uh, well, uh, you know, for the first time, there was some actually great video testimonials that I just uh, received and they were not getting edited, just couldn't. So actually I've already gotten some help to get them edited and get them out there. And now I'm going to also get some help with um, copywriting and other things like that, engagement. And even if it's just somebody that tells you, hey, you should do this, or you should do that. But it helps you stay on track and, uh, and, you know, you can offload some of the work. So definitely copywriting and outreach uh, like this, things like that would definitely help. Love it. Love it. So important to be able to recognize your strengths and your weaknesses when you're running a business. Um, and, and be able to, it's okay to say like, I'm not good at that, or I need help with that. Where can we find that and start asking those questions? I know our team has grown incredibly over the last year or so as well as we're asking, you know, like what got you here is not the same thing that's going to take you to the, to the next level. And sometimes that means we need different tech or different teams or different, you know, and we've got to begin to ask those questions, what needs to change in order to grow. And I love it that you're doing that and excited about your next launch yeah. here in a little bit. And I, and I have to say that I've recognized that, but it isn't easy <laughs> also. Uh, right. Because you, you feel like, you know, when you do everything yourself, you like you have a certain way of doing it, and all of a sudden you're delegating, you're giving away things like, oh, but wait, I want to do it. So I'm finding it, I'm finding it challenging to do it on my own, but also it's a process to be able to offload and, and, and put things into the hands of other people. But it has to happen. For sure, for sure. What's your last piece of advice for all of our launchers out there today launching their courses into the world, George? My best advice is uh, keep things as simple as possible. We try to sometimes overcomplicate things, so to try to keep them as simple as possible and uh, never forget to deliver, right? I mean, I think this is the best thing. Um, 
you might not see the return immediately, but when you deliver value and you make sure that you get the result, people sign up for you to get a transformation. So you just never want to uh, lose that in track. And sometimes when you over deliver, well, you you, you get the, re the return. And so that's my best advice is to just uh, stay focused, give value, never forget to give value and things will pay out for you. Love it. Thank you so much for being here. It's okay. been a pleasure to talk with you. Um, if you're watching, listening to this, uh, wherever you are, we want you to know that you can connect with George at courseplatformacademy.com. Find out about his services, find out about his next course. Um, go sign up for him. If you are one of those people who want to be able to host it on your own platform, that is the magic of what he does is helping you keep everything under your own roof um, and uh, being able to be successful with your course platforms through your own WordPress site. We also want you to go download our course creation blueprint at handprintlegacy.com forward slash CCB for course creation blueprint, because that's going to help you map out the content that George is going to then show you how to host on your site. So check our show notes for all of that information today. And of course, leave us a comment, leave us a review. We'd love to know how this has helped you to improve your next course launch. I'm Katie Horner. Until next time, remember your message matters. Thank you, Katie.